Hi everyone and welcome to Club 3 episode 32 of Rolling in the R's an FM20 British R's Journeyman series with me the United City FM and welcome to a brand new season with Derby County in the Premier League. We uh, we did really really well last season finished in 12th position which was far beyond expectation secured our uh, Premier League status for this season and we've gone again. Summer has been interesting I've made some really um, bold choices, I think, in terms of if immediately we look at the club's finances, you can see that they've dipped in the red, which is slightly unfortunate. Um, but I've gone all out in terms of trying to provide us with a, a firm foundation to secure again our Premier League status and continue to move the club forward. I basically made the choice, even though it was a little bit of a gamble, that this figure here the overall balance will improve by the end of the season just by whatever comes into the kitty from wherever we finish in the league. Um, it's a bit of a one-off. I wouldn't do it too often, but I think it's worth it. We've got no transfer budget left. We've got enough wage structure a little bit to play about with if need be um, to increase contracts that are already in the playing staff, etc. So all in all, I'm very happy with where things have gone, but I do see that the finances are a little bit of a gamble. I do understand that. So what did we end up doing? Well, we got rid of quite a few players. Um, we, we basically got rid of uh, Sibley, Crowley, Gilbert. Um, Clark was released from the club because his contract expired. Murray went back to his parent club off loan. Uh, from his loan Murphy had dropped into the reserves and was sold as well we didn't make a huge amount of money that's you know that's absolutely true we didn't but that's also quite positive because both Noel and Lokudoku were under real um, they were being looked at really uh, big time by some of the really big teams and we just about managed to keep them Lokudoku was um, had a, a transfer bid on him by Barcelona in the last few days of the transfer market of just shy of his release clause that he's got in his contract and they never came back in with a, a better offer uh, at this point anyway it's still um, we're, we're in August now so our transfer window is closed I guess the wider one is still open for some of the other nations maybe but at this point Lokudoku is in the club which is great um, and so, and Noel is the other one that um, some of the really big sides, PSG and the like, were sniffing around him. But we tied him down to a really big contract. Um, it's been quite a summer to try and do. In the initial instances in the summer, he wasn't interested in signing because the club uh, squad wasn't good enough for what he wanted, apparently. But now they are, and that shows you what we've managed to do in the transfer budget. Now, whilst I've been talking, I'm sure you've been looking into this column here and seeing what we've done. And what we've basically done is bought in four or five players for big money, but they've increased the, um, the potential and the current ability of our uh, first team squad. So the first one... As Gilbert went out of the club, an ageing right back, we had to go and find a decent right back option. And what I've done is I've gone into the history of the club and bought back to Derby County Jason Boggle. Uh, is Bogle Boggle? Not sure. Anyway, we'll go with Boggle for now. Um, and Jaden Boggle is, is a really good, solid right back with some really great physicals and mentals. Not the best technicals in the world, but good enough for what we want him to do. And because he's um, okay in terms of he understands the club, that's a benefit as well. And he comes back in as uh, trained at the club, etc. So that's helpful moving forward. And so he was the best one I could find. Yes, for a big money move. We bought him in from Aston Villa. Um, who I think got relegated from the Premier League. You can see that Derby County had him for a, from a young age, sold him on to Bournemouth, who he was only for, there for a season before he got a £47 million move to Villa. We've bought him back into um, to Derby County for 35 And I think that uh, whilst I would hope for slightly better average ratings that he's got than he's had previously, I think he's a good option to have. And whilst expensive... I think the fact that he's played for the club before is helpful. So Jaden Bogle comes into the club at right back. Ray White is a youngster going into our reserve setup. Uh, Gouve is a guy that I bought in for a big hefty fee from Benfica for 35 million with the thought that if Loku Doku went, then we've got a ready-made replacement for him. And if Loku Doku stayed, which so far he has, 
then we've got real competition for places on that left hand side and so this guy is an, as an inverted winger right footed off that left wing can play right side as well so he can cover both wings which is really helpful but off that left hand side you can see he can cut in put decent crosses dribbles really well not the most amount of pace but good acceleration uh, reasonable passing but in general off the ball is good vision is good technique is good i think there's a lot about him that can be quite useful to us and i think as a left hand side option and covering the right if need be we've got a decent player um, and he's also 26 years old, so he's got a few years left in him with no problems. Hasn't got a cap yet for Portugal. We might be able to help him get one of them, maybe. But Goive comes into the club on that left-hand side. And he comes in as the direct replacement for Murray, who finished his loan and went back. Uh, Watson, again, is another youngster, so he's come into our youth setup. Aaron Ramsey, not the Arsenal Aaron Ramsey. This guy... Uh, plays in the attacking midfield role so we've brought him in to replace Crowley and Sibley who have both left the club um, and he'll be in rotation with Martinez in the attacking midfield line but I think he's good I think he's very good 24 year old English guy if we go and look at his career stats started at Villa through Southampton into Leeds for 28 million we've picked him up for 35 again I'd quite like some higher average ratings but I think for what we've got and what he brings I think he's a benefit to us and in that attacking midfield option a good amount of passing good amount um, of flair and leadership is good composure is good there's lots of really good physicals in there vision at 14 is decent I think he's got a decent long shot on him so there's there's plenty about this guy that can come in and help and he goes straight into our first 11 I've put him in above Martinez to start with and we'll see those two will fight for that particular attacking midfield place so that's Ramsey. The next one in is Ivan, and he comes in as a, 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 a deep-lying playmaker in the defensive midfield role. So we've got Joku, um, and we've got May, um, and we, I wanted a slightly better option in here as a backup to Joku on this defensive midfield line. And again, this guy might come in and take the position, possibly. Hasn't got the most amount of tackling in the world, but that's not really why we need him. It's this, it's passing is good, um, and teamwork is good, leadership is good. We were lacking a little bit of leadership, so he doesn't take one of the captain's roles, but he's a backup to that. Phys uh, physicals are not the best, but they're decent, but it's the mentals that do him the world of good. And at 19, I think at 19, we've got a decent player who can continue to improve, and so he will come in and rotate with um, Joku in that holding midfield player role. So that's Ivan comes in. Santos for 17.25 uh, million is a decent amount of money, I think, for a 19-year-old with that much potential. And the last one we bought him, I almost bought him, but I ran out of money, basically. I could almost have picked him up for just under 17 million, which is decent for what we've got. Didn't manage it, but got him in on loan, and hopefully we can do the deal this time next year, maybe. Um, Armedio Monteres uh, is as good as I can do, Monteres brought him in for Inter on a, a season long loan and this is a striking option because Clark left the club. Audren stays on loan as well as, do, as does Burns in our central defensive role. Those two stay on from their loans for last season but this guy I think could be something quite special. Now immediately you say okay but he's got no pace and no strength. Absolutely that is true. His physicals are not the best. But at 19 years old, he's got great finishing, great composure, great decision making, great anticipation, great off the ball. And all of those counterattack the lack of pace that he's got. And he's also got a wicked long shot on him, which we've seen once in the pre-season already, I think. And a decent technique and work rate is good. I think there's a really good striker in here. Ida will start as the number one this season. Audren drops back in the pecking order slightly. And this guy comes onto the bench to start with, but could quite easily take the number one slot as the season progresses. And then we'd have to make a decision about how we actually keep hold of him. But uh, Monteres comes into the club as the final signing of the summer. That's what we've achieved. We've spent a hefty amount of money. It's put the club in a little bit of debt. We'll have to work hard to get back out of that a little bit in terms of, uh, finishing as high as we can just to get some more money from the uh, from the um, competition um, 
uh, the the prize money sorry um, you can see that we didn't make a lot of money but that's just the gamble that I took really if we go into the competition page and we focus on the uh, season preview you can see that it has us in 17th now the board expectation for this season is that we avoid relegation that's all they've asked me to do if we finish in 17th we do that last season we finished in 12th if you go to the comment section of last episode for rolling in the aisles it's brilliant about 90 percent of all the comments said well done on having, uh, uh, maintaining the premier league status but season two is going to be really hard everybody told me it's going to be impossible season two is going to be difficult it's going to be this it's going to be that and i totally agree and understand which is why i've done what i've done bringing in the type of player that i bought in to try and cement us in the premier league if i finish anywhere between 11th and 17th i've got to be happy with that just as we continue to build the club i my expectation is just because we finished 12th last season that we'll automatically do better it's not that's not my expectation. My expectation is we avoid relegation and we secure our place in the Premier League and we continue to build and eventually we'll continue to move up the division. That's my ex expectation. If we go and have a look at the um, key players for the team, it's now Boggle and Noel. And Noel is an absolute superstar for this side. You can see at 19, he's improved a lot since we've had him. Those physicals and all the key attributes are here down the right-hand side. I put him on as big an um, amount of money as I could to secure him. Well, that's what it, he asked for more and I beat him down because that's all the, the club could afford. And we gave him some bonuses, but he's on a big contract till 32. We're in currently in 27, year 27. So we've got a real big star and his um, reserve price now to be bought from under us was about 40 odd million, which is why I took it away as quickly as I could in the season, um, the transfer market, because I knew people would sniff around him. It's now over 100 million. So people are going to have to pay for him big time if they want him out the club. But he's going to be an absolute superstar. I'm pinning all of my hopes on Manuel Noll to drag as high as, as he can up the division this season. So, the media prediction, 17th. The board want us to um, avoid relegation. I'd be happy anywhere above 17th in this season just to keep us in the Premier League and keep building. Uh, there was nobody that came in for me personally in the summer. Chelsea changed their manager. I didn't get a look in and didn't want to. I didn't apply for it. I'm waiting for the big boys to come to me because I'm more than happy to continue to build Derby County as much as I can. So, we are still in Club 3, i.e. Derby County. We are in episode 32. We start another Premier League campaign. Um, the, the transfer window in terms of what we can buy has ended. The, the transfer window for some of the European clubs remains open. So we've got to be a little bit hopeful that the likes of Loku Doku don't go. But we've got a decent replacement in um, Gouvet if he does. So I think we've done as good as we can. I'm happy with the business. I'd like the, client, uh, the finances to be a bit better. We'll see over the course of the season what sort of profit and loss margins we now have. But I'm really happy with what we've done. And we start against Everton. And just one more thing to show you in terms of our schedule before we get going for the Everton match is that the, the schedule has been really unkind to us in a couple of spots. We get a decent start in terms of the team, but then look at this section here, Man City, then Norwich, but then Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal all in a row, and then Leicester, Liverpool, Tottenham, a game after Bournemouth as well. That's, uh, that section between October and December is going to be really hard unless a couple of these teams move in and out of those spots because of European stuff that they've got. And then later in the season, again, look at this run. Tottenham, Liverpool, Leicester, Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, all in a row. So we've got to be really, really structured about getting the points when we can in the, um, in the run of games in and around these two really difficult periods. I think some of these will move because the bigger guys have European commitments. Absolutely. I hope a couple of them will move. But it's going to be really, really hard to get points from, this, uh, from a couple of these um, sections in our schedule. Today, though, is about Everton in the Premier League and getting off to as good a start as we possibly can. You can see that we've got a couple of injury issues. Story, central defender, is out just a couple of days. A couple of these are out. 
but it means they're not playing today. So Story is out, Ivan is out, the new uh, holding midfield player, Joku is out, the other one, so May will play in that role today. Um, McCowan is out, just coming back from a knock himself. And also, um, no, those are the four. Those are the four that are out today. So it just means a little bit of a reshuffle just while we get everybody back to full fitness. In terms of the pre-season stuff, if we just quickly go uh, back into the schedule, sorry, you can see that we had a really good start. So momentum is with us and the motivation and confidence is with us. So hopefully we can do some good things. Uh, back into the tactics, you can see that all of the injuries and the issues that we've got um, have meant that a bit of a reshuffle. But what we've got is we've got Bazunu in goal, we've got Bogle at right back, we've got uh, Target at left back, Portis and Harwood Bellis in central defence with May, Vera and Ramsey in central midfield, Noll on the right, Lokudoku on the left, Ida up top with a bench of Burns, Cooper, Silas, Martinez, Scott, Gouvet and Monterrey. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. So I've asked the players to go out there and give the fans their money's worth today. Good opportunity for us to get a decent start, hopefully. Everton are a no bad side whatsoever, of course. They've got a lot of decent players in their mix. Um, but we've, we've structured well, I think, for the summer. We're playing our asymmetric formation today, so our balanced approach gives us somewhere to go in terms of going more attacking if we need to or more defensive if we need to later in the game. You can see that there uninterested after a bit of a shout out from their manager which has got to be positive for us so ultimately everything's going according to plan so far although we're not too much in this game so far in terms of the chances created but at 30 minutes Everton have a power blaster of a shot out of nowhere down that right hand side really acute angle and took everybody by surprise including the goalkeeper and absolutely powered it into the back of the net for a 1-0 lead it's a good amount of passing in a triangle there. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> at a real acute angle in that near post, just powers it into the back of the net. And Bazunu didn't react well enough into that top corner. It was such a clean strike. And we go 1-0 down. And it looks like we're going to go into half time that way, possibly. Unless it's even worse. Let's see here. Again, down that right-hand side. So it's uh, a good opportunity for us to hold shape and keep the pressure on them but they're working it very nicely and they get it into the penalty box across to the left hand side and they have to come all the way out to the, the wide left to rebuild again but they have maintained possession um, go right the way across the midfield again into central midfield to Eric Dyer over the top <laughs> who is that guy and <laughs> what sort of a shot was that have we got a weldy against us somehow Dear me, Eric Dyer gets the ball back in a second, goes over the top, nicely into the path of uh, Olsen, and left-footed on the volley, absolutely lashes the ball into the far corner. And again, B Bazunu on that occasion didn't really move at all, well on side. <laughs> and they've hit us with two almighty good goals. <sighs> Who is this guy? Skov Olsen plays on the right hand side has got yeah, he's got a lot about him hasn't he in his technicals not so much in in the physicals but those technicals are quite something aren't they and that shows where he's come from uh, a Danish international and has done a really good job for Everton there and we find ourselves 2-0 down and it's a very disappointing performance in the sense of we've never really got going. We haven't had any highlights in our favour. So we're going to have to assertively tell them that we've got to be shown something different. And then we'll passionately go in and suggest I have faith in you. Try and build them up and go into this second half with some uh, confidence and some momentum and mo motivation, should I say, is more like it. We end the team talk there. And then what we're going to go and do is go into the tactics and switch up into our more attacking Geg and Press style, 4-2-3-1. Uh, Everybody plays in the roles still that they've been asked to, so there's no change of personnel needed. Everybody's fit to carry on. And once we get into the second half, we're also going to pause it and shout and tell them to get creative and just see if we can get something of momentum behind our play in this second half. Very disappointing first half overall from what I hoped would have been a much more positive start than we seem to have got. And still, 
the um, opportunities don't come for us at all. And it's that danger man, Olsen, on the ball again, gets into the top of the penalty box. McTominay out wide left to Thorpe, who's going to keep the ball in just about. We're not pushing and keeping... Oh, that was close. We're not pushing the, the uh, defenders out to them enough in this press style to go and get it. I'm disappointed by that. Finally, after 65 minutes, it looks like we might actually get a chance. And it's Noel... And oh, that is such poor goalkeeping, isn't it? Such poor goalkeeping from Pickford. I'll leave you to comment on Pickford. I won't do it. But that is so disappointing for him and a bit of a relief for us. Noel, round his marker at the corner of the six-yard box, powers it at the goalkeeper and he makes a bit of a hash of it. And we go 2-1. We're going to pause the game there and go back into the tactics page and see what substitutions we can make. Um, so we're going to just have a look at some of these um, average ratings and see what we've got and you can see where the issues lie we've got a couple of defensive poor ones and we've got a couple of attacking poor ones defensively I think we're holding our own a little bit more than we did a little while ago in the game so I'm not too worried about that I'm going to bring Portis off and bring Burns on and just secure the central defensive role a little bit uh, central yeah central defensive role and then we're going to have to take um Lokodoku uh, Lokodoku off and bring on Gouve and see what he can do and take out Ida and bring Monteres on and see what he can do we're just going to change the role of um Gouve a little bit onto his uh, preferred inverted winger role and just give that to him so yeah those are the changes we're going to make um again we're going to come back out and we're going to shout and demand more and just see if we can get something from this game. It's given us a little bit of a glimpse of hope, hasn't it? That error by Pickford. And we've got to find a way to do something about it now. But all the dominance is still from Everton in terms of the chances created. It's been very disappointing. May into Boggle, though, and to, onto Ramsey. Turns from his man, gets to the top of the box, and all oh, just squeezes it narrowly wide of the goal left footed. Um, and the goalkeeper had it covered, I think, mostly. But yeah, a bit of a wayward shot. Can we get one opportunity? Ramsey into target, across to Noel, out to May, who will pick up the loose ball. But that's poor, poor control by May. And he's third choice in that area. And you can see why at this point. It's disappointing not to have um, Joku or Ivan in that role for the first couple of games of the season. Um, May has done okay for us in bits, but is obviously just a little bit behind that today. <sighs> it's disappointing, isn't it? It's very disappointing. It's not a, It's not an easy game against Everton as well. There are no easy games in this Premier League, as we've already seen from season one. But I hoped for a bit better start than we did get. Olsen was an absolute beast in that first half. Noel, good bit of quality in the build-up to a, a bit of a lucky goal. But Pickford, um, you know, made a mistake for that. Still got a 7.2 average rating, though, Pickford, which is extraordinary. But yeah... Very disappointing, really. I think we're going to have to tell them that. Um, but I don't want to do it too much just because I still want to try and understand that we are, you know, uh, a, a force in the Premier League that's still trying to find its feet a little bit. So, unlucky, boys. It would have been nice to win, but it wasn't to be. Let's go with that one just for now. Suppress the, the disappointment a little bit. Keep them uh, relaxed and motivated. There's some good games coming up. That's not done us any favours just at the moment. If we um, just click through into the competition page and just, uh, not the competition page, the schedule page and see what's coming. You see Huddersfield, Fulham, West Ham, Burnley. There's some good games for us to play in there. Also an unknown side in the League Cup as well. We're going to come back and play the Wolves match at the end of September and by that point we'll have had a good amount of games under our belt just to see where we sit in this division this season but the likes of Huddersfield and Fulham are good games for us to be playing let's hope we can get some points from them a disappointing start a little bit of a bitty start in terms of a couple of players that are really key to us being out the likes of Story and Ivan and Joku are all going to be really good for us this season I hope but that's what we've got a squad for you've got to play the squad here and there when you have to and they weren't quite there at the races today but tomorrow's another day so let's see what happens 
Join me for the next episode. Thanks for joining me today, though. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so. Click that subscribe button and come and join my United City community. If you haven't clicked the like button also, that really helps me get seen by lots of other people. So do that for me. That'd be great. But until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now. Thank you.